first we're going to listen to Aina Bugge, which is uh, an industrial PhD candidate with uh, Kalkulu AS, who collaborates with Lundin, Norway and the University of Oslo. She con uh, concentrates on automatic interpretation of geological features in seismic images based on techniques for image processing, signal processing and machine learning. When she's finished, we will not have questions until Lucas Moser has done his presentation. Which, um, well, Lucas is currently a PhD student at Imperial College London, which, uh, with his main focus on uh, recent advances, uh, advances in image genera generation using deep learning and gener general applications of machine learning in geoscience. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas recently won first prize in the Society of Exploration Geophysicists uh, machine learning content, uh, contest on wildland facies classification as well as him and the, his uh, team at the EAG hackathon held in Paris in 2017 and Copenhagen in 2018. And congrats. The floor is yours. Okay, so me first. Um, yes, so I'm Aina. Uh, I'm going to talk about my PhD project, which is a collaboration uh, between Calculo, Lundin, and the University of Oslo. This is probably the one I can use. And just a little bit about the motivation and the background first. I guess most people here are familiar with this traditional workflow uh, of interpreting seismic data. Uh, first, you have to acquire the seismic data uh, and process the seismic data and, and just this can take well over a year. Um, then it's time to um, interpret your seismic data. And this is the process where geologists and geophysicists more or less manually try to map out uh, features like faults, um, unconformities and seismic horizons. And after the interpretation, then you can start building geological models and try to really understand what is going on in the subsurface. And with this project, we are looking more into the interpretation part. So we are trying to take advantage of methods that exist uh, within image processing, signal processing, and machine learning to, to automatically extract information from seismic volumes. And so far, we've had a few projects. Uh, we've had one on faults, trying to extract fault surfaces. Uh, we've had uh, one on unconformities, trying to detect unconformities in seismic data. And uh, right now, we are working on trying to uh, interpret and correlate seismic horizons, specifically in very complex geological areas. So we're focusing on fault block areas. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so we have developed a completely data-driven uh, three-dimensional horizon tracker for, uh, for very structurally complex um, areas. So the goal or the sort of the, the whole idea for this project is to develop a tracker that is um, that requires no geological model uh, knowledge, no geological knowledge, and no interpreter uh, experience to use. So sort of, um, sort of a method where, where you can just press play uh, and get some interpretation out of it that makes sense. The method we uh, have developed um, works pretty well, or it handles faults pretty well. It also handles amplitude differences uh, pretty well. Uh, one of the uh, um, one of the limitations with our method is that you really have to um, define your seismic sequence in advance. So you have to um, you have to sort of crop out or or um, uh, classify the seismic sequence of interest before you can run the tracker. And I'm sure you can imagine lots of ways to do this. Um, the most intuitive one would be to just manually draw a polygon or something to crop out your seismic sequence. Or, as we've heard today, there are lots of um, very interesting supervised machine learning methods that you could probably use to do seismic facies analysis um, and so on. 
but we wanted to uh, come up with a completely automatic method. So that means that we um, don't want to rely on any labels or any training data. So we have a completely automatic process where we first apply a, a texture descriptor to the seismic data to sort of quantify um, the different patterns in the seismic. Then we use unsupervised clustering to um, classify the different patterns or the different textures um, in, in the seismic. And finally, then we can um, extract the different classified uh, patterns or sequences. And keep in mind that this is not uh, a detailed facies analysis. This is just us trying to um, get the large uh, continuous seismic sequences in the seismic data. So I'll go a little bit more into the details here. Um, local binary pattern, the texture descriptor that we have used, looks at the um, looks at the texture around every pixel in the image. So what it basically does is that if you have one pixel in the seismic data, in 2D, that pixel will have eight neighbors. And this, depending on the values of that neighbors, if they are higher or lower than the um, center pixel, this can be used to, to quantify the texture or the binary texture around the pixel. So we do that for all the pixels in the seismic data in order to get the entire local binary pattern data. Then we extract feature vectors from this local binary pattern data. Uh, and the feature vectors are basically just a histogram over a chosen um, image of the, or a chosen um, cube in the entire uh, volume. And when we have um, all the feature vectors for, for all the subcubes in the local binary pattern data, we use unsupervised clustering to classify um, seismic sequences. And now that we have defined our seismic sequences, then we can use our uh, horizon tracker. And our horizon tracker is based on uh, dynamic time warping, which is an algorithm originally meant for uh, speech recognition. Um, so dynamic time warping matches the pattern of two time signals. So what you can think of it, or you can think of it as taking one time signal and then sort of stretching it and compressing it non-linearly. Um, in order to try and match its shape to another time signal best. This works ver very well for speech signals, but also for seismic signals. And this is an example of using um, the dynamic time warping for two seismic signals. You will then get the minimum distance warp path, which is a point-by-point -point matching of all the uh, reflective events in those two seismic signals. And we can then use this, um, use this uh, warp path to track seismic horizons. And you can basically track as many horizons as you want to at the same time. Or you can say that you want to track these 10 strongest reflectors or one reflector for every 20th sample or something like that. So that's up to the user to, to choose. But you should choose. Um, a distinct peak or trough in order to get good results. And of course, we're not using just two seismic signals. Um, we have developed a three-dimensional grid that works iteratively around in the seismic volume within the defined seismic sequence, which means that we also, as this uh, window moves around iteratively in our vo volume. This means that we also um, record a measurement of uncertainty while tracking the horizons. So this can be used to remove bad points, or it can be used to remove entire horizons if, if the uncertainty is too low. So here you see all the steps with the preliminary results and the filter results after removing sort of bad points. And then the final results, um, which will be um, individual binary uh, seismic horizons. So each um, binary horizon can be stored as a text file um, and, and very easily be exported to different seismic software platforms, such as, for example, Petrel, which we have used. 
Yes. So a little bit about the results. Um, the tracker is pretty good. If um, can can handle relatively small faults really easily. It can also handle fault blocks, so it sort of uh, can go from one fault block and over to another fault block with, without knowing what's between the fault blocks, uh, assuming that there's too much faults and, and um, untrackable data there. We have used a lot of time trying to compare our automatic results to sort of the best ground truth that we have, which is uh, manual interpretations done by really, really experienced geoscientists. And for these particular fault blocks, the more lower horizons are uh, tracked and correlated correctly, but the higher up you go, the, higher, the closer you get to the unconformity. And the unconformity here has eroded very differently, these two fault blocks. So as closer you get to the um, erosion surface, the more off will the correlation between the, the seismic horizons be. So on the left here, you see the uh, automatic results. So the lower green one and the lower blue one, those are correct. At least that's what we think. The red one is, however, off by um, a couple of reflectors. And to the right there, you see uh, manual interpretation. So that's what I assume is the ground truth here. So how can we improve that? Um, first of all, these uh, fault blocks have been um, obviously faulted, also rotated differently, eroded differently, and compacted differently. The different compaction and the different rotation is not the issue. The issue is with the different degree of erosion. So if you can do a better classification of the seismic sequence, sort of um, removing what is not present in both fault blocks, then I think the tracker can do much better. So that's sort of the next step in improving this. And sort of to end this, um, even though it's not perfect yet, it is um, a seismic horizon tracker that is completely automatic. This means that you need no geological knowledge, you need no interpreter experience, you can sort of just upload a seismic cube, a segway cube, press play, and then hopefully get some, some interpretations that, that makes more or less sense. And uh, also, please keep in mind that this is a pretty, pretty difficult seismic cube. So lots of faults, um, difficult seismic um, stratigraphy. Yes, and I think that was it.